Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to convert an STL file into a solid model, which will then allow you to edit and alter the geometry to your specification. A viewer asked how to do this and I thought it would be a good video idea, but also add some comments about what I found works, what doesn't work, and how to get around a few things, hopefully preventing some headaches. Now I will forewarn you that this doesn't always work, especially on models that have simply been placed together and then exported as an STL file but I'll come to that a little later. So first, how do I create a solid model from an STL file in FreeCAD? Now it is advised that you analyze and repair your model within the Mesh Workbench before creating a solid model. You can also use a piece of free software called MeshLab for this, depending on the complexity of your model. However, I'm going to skip over that part due to the fact that I found it adds more problems than solutions, which again, I'll come to later in the video. So I've already got my STL model within FreeCAD, just by simply clicking on the file icon up here and opening the STL model. I'm within the part workbench, and with our model selected, I'm gonna go up here to our toolbar and click on part. This will then give me a dropdown. I'm then gonna click on create shape from mesh, and we'll then get a box here, which is our sewing tolerance. Now, I've read that the higher the tolerance, the less time the model takes to process, obviously depending on computer speed. However, I found it to be the opposite way around. The lower the tolerance, the faster the process. I tested geometry with a high number of faces. If I set the tolerance to 0.5, it took 15 minutes. But if I changed it to 0.1, it took less than a minute. This doesn't really make sense to me, as in my mind a lower tolerance should be higher accuracy, meaning more processing time. I don't know if anyone can clear this up for me and shed some light on the situation. Let me know in the comments below. So the default value is 0.1, and that's what I'm gonna leave it at. I'm gonna say okay, and you'll see that we've now got another piece of geometry in our model tree. So we've got our simple SDR file with no lines on it. And if I hide that, you'll see we've now got ourselves a mesh of our part. I'm gonna click on our new piece of geometry. And again, I'm gonna to come to the parts dropdown, which is on our tool ribbon. And I'm gonna click on convert to solid. This will then create another part in our model tree. So I'm gonna hide our previous piece of geometry. So this is now a solid. But as you can see, we've got a lot of different faces separated by edges. So we can actually clean this up. Now on some models, this work, will work. In other models, it'll clean up a couple of lines, but it'll still leave a few lines left around. Um, but it's just cleaning up as much as it possibly can. If we have our piece of geometry selected, again, we can come up to the part, drop down, click on that, move down to create a copy. And down at the bottom here, you'll see refine shape. If we click on that, You'll then see we create another piece of geometry, but all of our lines are now gone. This is now a solid refined piece of geometry, which we can now edit within FreeCAD. So if I was to come over to our part design workbench, go to our model tab, select our solid. Again, we have to have an active body for us to be able to edit geometry. I've got our cube selected, and I'm gonna click on this icon here, which is create a body. Our model is now put into our body and it's called base feature. So now if I was to click on the top here, create a sketch, add a simple circle just on the center, and I'm going to pocket that through. And as you can see, we've now got ourselves an editable piece of geometry. So as an example of what we can actually use this for, let's say I've downloaded this model from GrabCAD or Thingverse. I really like the model, but let's say I want to change the size of the hex head. So what I've done here is, is I've obviously gone through the process I've just spoke about and I've created a sketch on our top face and it's just a simple three mil hex like so. But I want to also fill in what a previous user has created. So what I can do is I can click on this icon up here, which will allow me to select uh, geometry from our part. So what I can do is I can select around that, which can give us a reference point. And what I can do is then is I can create a hex like so, attach it to the previous geometry. Close out of that. I can then go up here and click on the pad icon. And as you'll see, our geometry has disappeared. I'm gonna go up to type and I'm gonna select up to face. I'm then gonna move it around to the bottom of our part and select this bottom face. And you'll see how it is now filled in the original hex skin. So I'm gonna say, okay. I then want this to be a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna click on our pad and I'm gonna go down to refine and I'm gonna set that to true and click back on our window. And you'll see that's now cleaned up 
our geometry. Now I've already refined this shape and you'll see what I was talking about earlier where sometimes it doesn't clear up all of the edges. Now I believe this is just something that we have to live with, but if that's not the case, please let us know in the comments down below. I did look into a couple of macros, especially as the process from creating an STL file into a solid model is a little bit long winded. And I think just having a button to be able to select the STL model and click that button and inst instantaneously convert it would be so much easier. I did find a few while doing my research which worked on some geometry but failed when coming against complex geometry, like this part. I don't know much about macros right at this moment, but after seeing what we can achieve, I'm really interested with getting involved. I'll leave a link in the description to a macro for those of you who'd like to try it out. So in this next part, I'm just going to talk about a couple of errors that I found while trying to convert STR models into solid geometry. So what I was saying earlier about the mesh workbench being temperamental about analysing and repairing certain faces. So as you can see here, I've got my solid model that I created from an STL file that we imported. I haven't used the analyze and repair onto this yet, but it's worked perfectly fine. There's been no errors. It hasn't told me there's anything wrong with it. And I've actually tried and edited it and it's worked perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to hide that and I'm going to bring back our mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to use the analyze and repair. So again, I'm going to click on analyze all. And it's going to come up with all of these errors telling me that there's something wrong with the geometry. Now, personally, I don't really know what's wrong with it. It's saying something to do with two flip normals, uh, 17 non-manifolds, 21 degenerated faces, and a couple of others. So if I click repair, you'd think it would solve the errors using its magical abilities, ending with the same model minus the errors. But instead, it gave me back half a model, which I now definitely can't turn into a solid. I would say if you're receiving errors when trying to turn your STR model into a solid, this could be a good place to start even if it's just to see where FreeCAD thinks the errors are. And then possibly moving it into MeshLab if the repair tools in FreeCAD don't give you the results you're looking for. So for my second example, what I've got here is this aux face, and I've already created a mesh from the STL file that I imported. Now if I click on that, go onto our part dropdown and say convert to solid, what this will do is it will throw up an error at the bottom of our screen here that says cannot convert aux 001 because shape is not a shell. So uh, I've seen that a couple of times in the forums, people not quite sure what that is. So I convert this to a wireframe, and what you'll be able to see is you'll see that this is actually not one whole piece of geometry. So for those of you who are actually creating your solid piece of geometry, you need to join everything together at the end. So like I would in Blender, so this is the face that I created, we've got our eyes and we've got our teeth here, and the way we get around this is by creating a boolean and unifying all of this together so that it becomes one whole shape. Now remember to delete the shape once you've actually uh, attached it to your main geometry, otherwise uh, that will still get exported as an STL file and when you import that into FreeCAD that will also still cause an error. So once you've booleaned whatever you're creating you should end up with something like this. So it looks very similar but as soon as I turn it on frontwards and I say wireframe you'll see that there's no surfaces on the inside of my piece of geometry and I can actually create myself a solid. So that's the first way of getting around something that you may have created yourself uh, in something like Blender. A few of you may be wondering why I'm not using Real Funders mod and that's only because everything that failed in the standard FreeCAD worked perfectly fine within the mod. So I didn't want to mislead anyone but also I was a bit skeptical because everything was going so smoothly. It's like this one, I've still got the same face with the internal wires but yeah, it works flawlessly, and I've edited it, and then I exported it into Cura for 3D printing, just to see if it failed at any point. So if you're still having trouble, perhaps try Real Funders mod, and see what results you get there. So remember, if you're editing another piece of geometry, sculpting your own 3D models in Blender, creating a chess key ring, or mapping the surface of the moon, when they are all created correctly, importing STLs can be relatively pain-free, and actually extremely rewarding. Although there are some times you just want to rip your hair out and shout. That'll be all for today's tutorial, and hopefully I've taught you something that you may not have known, but also something that you can go out and try yourself. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you disliked the video, give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I hope you all had a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.